بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وزرياته وأهل بيته بارك سلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد my brothers and sisters رمضان مبارك to all of you May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this great month in a state of perfect health with plenty of time and the tawfiq and the guidance to intensely use it to please Him in every way that we can. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, today as we stand on the doorstep of Ramadan al Karim. And before I go forward, I want to remember and ask you to remember all those who were with us last Ramadan but are not here today. Let us make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them His forgiveness and fills their qubur with His noor and gives them Jannatul Firdaus without Hisab, insha'Allah. The question I want to ask is, did they know that last Ramadan would be the last Ramadan of their lives? Had they known, what would, you, what would they have done differently? That is a question not for them but for us. Because we don't know if this Ramadan is to be our last. We have this Ramadan just like they had last Ramadan. And just as they did not know that last Ramadan was going to be their last, in the same way, we do not know if this is going to be our last. The only solution is to treat every Ramadan as if it is going to be our last because that may well be the case. Once we face Malakul Maut, it is pointless to regret not having done more for Allah which really means more for ourselves. Because whatever we do for Allah is only for our own benefit. So let us begin by asking ourselves what we plan to do for ourselves this Ramadan, in case it is our last. Our brothers and sisters, Ramadan al Karim comes to help us to restore our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only connection which matters and which will help us when we go into the next life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladheen min qablikum. كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, which means, O oh, you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may become al muttaqoon. Al muttaqoon are people who are concerned about the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And that is their single point criterion to decide everything in life, which is, does it please Allah? My brothers and sisters, I remind myself and you that fasting drives home the meaning of taqwa. To do something only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes it, whether it makes sense or whether we like it or not. In Ramadan, we hold ourselves back from enjoying what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made halal only because he told us to do so. How important therefore to stop ourselves from doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made haram. If during the period of the fast we don't eat or drink or have a physical relationship with our spouse because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered it, all of which are normally halal but we don't do that because Allah ordered it, how can we eat and drink haram and have haram relationships and buy and sell haram and deal in interest and do all other things that Allah prohibited throughout our lives? This is hypocrisy. Ramadan is time to reflect on ourselves and our lives and make changes that will correct our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe me, my brothers and sisters, a day will come 
when we will either be very glad we did this or weep tears of blood that we didn't. The most important thing to do, therefore, is to set goals for ourselves, to become muttaqoon, to live our lives with only one goal, and that is to please Allah. Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared about this. شَهَرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَىٰ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَىٰ وَالْفُرْقَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said which means the month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran a guidance for mankind and clear proofs for the guidance and the criterion between right and wrong al furqan my brothers and sisters i remind myself anew that the quran is living speech of al hayyul qayyum the living and established in a way that suits his majesty and grace the sahaba ridwanullah alayhi majma'in understood this and they went to Rasulullah for all matters seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decisions. They believed in Al Hayyul Qayyum and they believed in the Kalam of Al Hayyul Qayyum. What an amazing time that must have been when they asked Rasulullah their questions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered those questions. One of the most beautiful of these incidents is the story of Khawla bin Tathalaba radiallahu anha and her husband Aus bin As-Samit and this is narrated by Imam Ahmad and Abu Dawood and it is quoted by Imam Ibn Kathir in his tafsir at the beginning of Surah Al-Mujadila. Khawla anha narrated by Allah concerning me and Aus bin Thamit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the beginning of the Surah Al-Mujadila. I was married to him, meaning Khawla Khawla bin Talaba was married to Auth bin Samit and he was an old man who was bad tempered. One day he came in and I raised a particular matter with him um, and he became angry. He said, you are to me like the back of my mother. This was a very bad practice that the uh, Arabs had during the Jahiliya, which was called Zihar, where a man said, you are like the back of my mother. And so this wife now was neither divorced, nor was she a wife, and she was in that state. So he said, you are to me as the back of my mother. Then he went out and sat for a while in the meeting place of his friends. Then he came back and he wanted to resume marital relationship with me. I said, no way. By the one in whose hand is the soul of Khawla, you will never get what you want from me after saying what you said until Allah and his messenger decide between us. So now, here is Aus bin Thamit who made a mistake. And his wife is very mad at him. She is very angry with him. And she is angry enough to say that I am going to complain to Rasulullah and I am going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this. Meaning that I am taking my complaint to Allah and his Nabi Now, she says, she continues, then I went to one of my neighbors, uh, one of his, one of her female friends, and borrowed a cloak from her to cover herself, and then she went to meet Rasulullah There she said, I sat before him وسلم, and told him what my husband had done to me and began to complain to him about my sufferings because of my husband's bad temper. Rasulullah very kind, very, very merciful, and he knows these people intimately. They're all, you know, related to him in one way or the other, or they are his family, or they are people who he knows very int- intimately. So Rasulullah says to him, she said, Rasulullah said to me, Oh, Hawla, your cousin, because Aud bin Zamit was also her cousin. He said, Your cousin is an old man. So fear Allah with regard to him, meaning, you know, forgive him, it's okay, he said something, don't, don't, don't get upset and so on. Khawla said, no, this is 
he said this very bad thing to me and I will not leave him and I will not leave you until Quran is revealed about this. He said, I, she said, I did not leave him until Quran was revealed concerning me. So she sat there and she said, Ya Rasulullah, this is bad. I, I, I will not accept this. Now she says that he was overcome as he usually was when Quran was revealed to him. And when it was over, meaning when the revelation was finished, she, he said to her, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Khawla, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has revealed Quran concerning you and your husband. Just put yourself in this place. We read the Quran as if, you know, we have to finish one Jews and ten Jews or whatnot and, and finish and thawab. This is the living word. This is the, this is Allah speaking to us. Try to understand this. The Sahaba understood this. So Khawla said, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh, Khawla, Allah has revealed Quran concerning you and your husband. And then he recited to me. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوُرَكُمَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ الَّذِينَ يُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ نِسَائِهِمْ مَا هُنَّ أُمَّاتِهِمْ ما هن أمهاتهم إن أمهاتهم إلا الله ولدنهم وإنهم ليقولون منكرا من القول وزورا وإن الله لا عفو غفور والذين يظاهرون من نسائهم ثم يعودون لما قالوا لما قالوا فتحرير رقبة من قبل أن يتماس ذلكم تعظون به والله بما تعملون خبير فمن لم يجد فصيام شهرين متتابعين من قبل أن يتماس فمن لم فمن لم يستطع فيتعام ستين مسكينا ذلك لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وتلك حدود الله وللكافرين عذاب أليم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed which means <coughs> Indeed Allah has heard the statement of the one Allah has heard her statement which is Qawla bin Taraba that disputes with you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam who is pleading with you dispute is he is not fighting with Muhammad here dispute means he is pleading with her concerning her husband Aus bin Thabit and complains to Allah and Allah hears the argument between you both verily Allah is all hearer all seer those among you who make their wives unlawful, as zihar to them by saying to them, you are like my mother's back. They cannot be their mothers. None can be their mothers except those who give them birth. And verily they utter an ill word and a lie. And verily Allah is oft pardoning, oft forgiving. And those who make unlawful to them, meaning their wives, by as zihar and wish to free themselves from what they uttered, which means free themselves from punishment, the penalty. In that case, the penalty is, the kafara is the freeing of a slave before they touch each other. That is an admonition to you, so that you may not return to such an ill thing. And Allah is all aware of what you do. And he who does not find, he who finds not the money for freeing a slave must fast two successive months before they both touch each other. Sixty days at a stretch. And for him who is unable to do so, he should feed sixty masakin, sixty poor people. That is in order that you may have perfect faith in Allah and his messenger sallallahu These are the limits set by Allah. And for the disbelievers, there is a painful torment. So, 
Hawala radiallahu anha says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told me, let him release a slave. Now listen to this whole thing. She comes there to complain about him. Right? So anyone who goes to complain, what are they expecting? They are expecting, okay, so this guy will be punished. This person will be punished. So now, what she wanted happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Quran, saying that she is right, he is wrong, and therefore he is to be, he is to be punished. And if he wants to escape the punishment, the penalty for that, the kafara for that, is to release a slave. What would anybody do? You would say, good. So I was right. Let him suffer. This is where the essence of Islam shows itself. This is where the signature of Islam shows itself. This, is, this shows the heart of the Muslim. This also shows the love between spouses. Yes, you get angry, but it's not anger for all time. I got angry with my spouse, but when I find she is in trouble or when she finds I am in trouble, the anger disappears and you, and you get together. So, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, tell him to release a slave. So, she says, I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, he does not have the money to do that. So, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then let him fast for two consecutive months. Khawza Radiyalana says, I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, he is an old man, he can't do that. Fasting for 60 days. One after the other. He can't do that. So now she came to complain about him. Now she is pleading for him. Subhanallah. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then let him feed 60 poor people with a wasak of dates. That was a measure. And she said, I said to him, Yeah, Rasulullah, he does not have that much. He's a poor man. He doesn't have the money. Now see the mercy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Here is a dispute between two people. What does it have to do with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yet, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then we will help him with a farak of dates. He said, I will give him. Now he's paying off the fine on behalf of Aus bin Sabit. He says that we will help him with a farak of dates. And Khawla Radiallahu says, then I will help him with another farak. So the two, the two of them, two farak make one wasak. She says, I will do this, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have done right and done well. Now go and give it in charity on his behalf and take care of your cousin properly. And she says, Radiallahu Anha. And I did so. My brothers and sisters, forgiveness and mercy are the symbols and the innate character and the symbol of Islam. Fasting is not only about staying hungry and thirsty. Fasting is about changing our character and bringing it on, in line with the character of Islam, the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the character of his beautiful sahaba and sahabiyat. If we don't do that, we have wasted Ramadan. Let us not do that. Let us not waste Ramadan. The signature of Ramadan, the signature of, of, of Islam is forgiveness and mercy. Do we have these? Let us clean our hearts from all grudges and from all hatred and from all resentment of others. Forgive others and seek forgiveness before, because when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will need His forgiveness. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, it is not lawful, it is not legal, it is not permissible, it is not allowed, it is not halal. It is not lawful for a Muslim to forsake and leave and not talk to his Muslim brother beyond three days and whosoever does so for more than three days and dies will certainly enter Jahannam. And this is a Sahih Hadith in Abu Dawood. Aisha radiallahu anha reported, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, she asked him, Ya Rasulullah, if I find Laylatul Qadr, what must I ask Allah? She, he said, O oh, Aisha, say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afu fa'afu anni. O oh Allah, you are forgiving and generous. You love to forgive, so forgive me. And this is in Sunan Sunan At-Tirmidhi. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma reported, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Be merciful to others and you will receive mercy. Forgive others and Allah will forgive you. And this is in Musnad Imam Ahmad. Abdullah ibn Amr also reported, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Be merciful to others and you will receive mercy. Forgive others and Allah will forgive you. And this is also in Musnad Imam Ahmad. The question to ask is, 
do I want Allah to forgive me? Because it is not about others, it is about us, it is about me. Let us not be garbage collectors. Hate is garbage, arrogance is garbage, jealousy, greed, envy, self-righteousness, and all such negative emotions and feelings are garbage. Let us clean our hearts of all garbage, like we clean our houses from material garbage. Material garbage only stinks. Emotional garbage has negative consequences in this life and the next. Let us use Ramadan al Karim to purify our hearts and dedicate them only for the glory and magnificence of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his guidance through his blessed book. His book, his word, Al Quran al Majid, to, to help us to reach our home and final destination safely. Our final destination, inshaAllah, is Jannatul Firdaus. And the way to reach it is to make the right choices. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us the criterion, Al Furqan, for decision making. Al Furqan, so that we can safely navigate the journey of our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us a guide. His messenger, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, to purify and prepare us to receive the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to explain it to us, to demonstrate how it is to be followed, the word of Allah and its field book, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are our guides in this life so that we can be saved from Jahannam. Let us therefore set goals for ourselves with respect to the Quran. How much more than usual will I read in Ramadan? What do I intend to do about understanding it better? And most important, for, uh, most important of all, what do I intend to do about living my life according to the Quran? The best example of that is the life of Rasulullah Wasallam. So what is my plan to implement the Quran in my life? I want myself and you to break out of our minimalist thinking when it comes to living Islam and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to kindle in our hearts love for him and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we race and compete with each other to, to do the most, not hunt for fatwas to justify doing the least. This is the trap of shaitan and the greatest danger. Let us use Ramadan al Karim to save ourselves from this trap. Ramadan is the month of dua. When the slave fasts and makes effort to please Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds with His glorious mercy and says, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Allah said, and when my slaves ask you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, concerning me, then answer them, I am indeed near to them by my knowledge. I respond to the dua of the supplicant when he calls on me without any mediator or intercessor. He does not go through this and that. He calls, him, calls on Allah directly. So let them obey me and believe in me so that they may be rightly guided. Let us use this month to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because only Allah likes those who ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to accept our dua but put two conditions. He said, let them obey me and believe in me. Obedience comes first. We obey Allah because he is our creator and created us to worship him which is the highest form of obedience. It is when we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he kindles the, in, kindles the light of guidance in our hearts. We obey Allah because we love him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us <coughs> to ask him and warned those who do not ask. He said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ اُدْعُونِي يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ghafir and your Rabb said, call, make dua to me, اُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Make dua to me directly 
and I will respond to your dua, to your invocation. Verily, those who scorn my worship, which is they do not believe in Islam and they do not make dua, they will surely enter Jahannam in humiliation. And Nu'man bin Bashir radiallahu anhuma reported, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Dua is worship itself. Inna dua huwa al-ibada. Ad-dua huwa al-ibada. In another place, Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ad-du'a ubukhu al-ibada. Du'a is the brain, is the, is the essence of ibadah. In this hadith, An-Numan bin Bashir radiallahu anhu reported, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Supplication or du'a is worship itself. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited the ayah, Your Rabb said, Call upon me and I will respond to you. Verily, those who disdain my worship will enter Jahannam in humiliation, which is the ayah which I just recited before you. I remind myself and you, dua is worship and worship is dua. That is why it is not permissible to make dua to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is not permissible to worship anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us learn to connect to Allah, to connect with Allah through dua, insha'Allah. We ask Allah for His mercy and grace. My brothers and sisters, <coughs> in conclusion, I remind myself and you, we obey Allah because we believe that one day we will stand before Him and we want that day to be the best day of our lives. Ramadan is the time to reflect and sincerely ask ourselves whether we really believe in the meeting with Allah. The test is to check our actions. When actions match belief, that is truthfulness and siddiq. When they don't, that is hypocrisy and nifaq. We know what happens to those who are truthful and those who are hypocrites. We must choose. Ramadan is the time to make that choice before we are called to account. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and, and help us to choose to become among the people of siddiq, the people of truth and protect us and take us far away from being the people of nifaq and the people of hypocrisy. Once again, Ramadan Mubarak to all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you in strong iman, in perfect health, with plenty of spare time and the tawfiq not to waste it in useless pursuits, but to use it every second, every instant of it, to use it in order to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us use Ramadan al Karim to maximize our deeds and to ensure that we, we get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jalla Jalalu. Wa sallallahu ala nabi al Karim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ar-Rahimi. Wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.